So, my own from Roots Fab. This is going to be part 16 on the mongrel build. So I just want to say thanks to everyone that commented on my video yesterday about, um, about YouTubing. I stayed up last night and read through every single one of them. Uh, all 500. Took quite a while. Yeah, I, like any doubts I had about doing this or whether it was a good idea are completely gone now. I'm 100% going to do this full time. There's loads of good ideas in the comments about, you know, ways I could get, different ways I could go about it um, and ideas for the patron uh, site. So with the patron site, I'm going to just upload all the videos 24 hours early. Seems like that is uh, something that a lot of people do and that uh, people are happy with. And yeah, thanks to everyone that signed up for that. It's been amazing. Another thing someone mentioned was having people's names on the car, which that's an idea I really like. I've actually seen that done before where like a whole race team was funded by people watching it and they had the whole roof of the car had all the names of everyone on it. So that's, that's an idea I really like. I forgot to mention um, merchandise. I should have t-shirts and hoodies ready by tomorrow that you'll be able to order. I'll have some samples of those in to show you in the next video, hopefully. A lot of people saying about just filming customer work. Um, it's not really possible because I do most of my work's done on an hourly basis. So if you've ever tried to film a video of you working, you'll know that it takes two to three times as long to do the job if you're filming it because you've got to move the camera around, think what you're going to say all that sort of stuff, so it just doesn't work. Someone mentioned about getting someone in, else in to carry on doing the roll cages, and um, I've got a mate who's actually interested in learning to do cages, and he's a really good fabricator, so that's something that could work, possibly. So, just carrying on with the cage today, I've got a new welder to test out as well, which uh, I've actually had some input into this welder, which so uh, that's pretty cool. And um, so I'm going to show you that and crack on with the uh, roll cage. All right, so this is it IFL MIG 180 Auto. I've been testing out their other machine, which is an all singing, all dancing, multi process thing that programs for welding everything you could weld plutonium to kryptonite and you know it just does a million things that I personally never use so I still use that machine on manual mode where I put the voltage in and the wire feed in. What I was saying to these guys is that they need something that's aimed more at the guy in his garage or someone like me doing this type of work that's just really simple basic to use but has like the build quality of that so this is what they've got this is European made which you can tell just by looking at it it's you know it hasn't got that Chinese look or feel to any of it feels nice good quality comes with a, uh, a proper Binzel Evo torch you get a proper good torch proper good clamp it's got kind of semi synergic functions on it where you, you can set in the uh, set in the thickness but I'm just going to be using it on uh, completely manual mode so I'm going to use it for the rest of this project hopefully and then I'll be able to give you some really good feedback on it by the end of it and they're selling these for 550 plus VAT at the moment I think so it's good price for what you're getting I think but um, yeah, let's test her out. So I've just been um, having a little play around. You know, like no weld spatter at all. So, so far so good. So I've got a bit of a confession to make. I did some work on the car without filming it. So I was just marking out some holes of where these tubes were gonna go through and then one thing led to another and I had my drill out and things just happened. But what I've got going on here. It's got a hole drilled here, a hole drilled here that's perfectly straight in line with the uh, legs on this side. So these, I need to notch these tubes, 
to meet in here and then I'll cut these off to where I've got like 25 mils sticking out the end of it and I'll be able to weld around the end and then I use this socket to connect the front end to so it'll just slide into the end of the tube I need to have a tube going from this point here down to the bottom foot where the uh, front leg meets the box to triangulate this corner in so what I'll do is I'll cut where I've drilled these two holes, cut down either side so I've actually got a slot um, so that I'll be able to slide this back and forward a little bit just to allow me to weld those front legs in. So that connects in onto there, comes through here and then I've drilled that hole down there which will connect to the leg at the bottom. Tricky thing we've got going on here is we've got that support there. So if possible, I would like to get it so that, that diagonal touches that support piece and I can actually weld the diagonal to that if I can, but if I cut it and it misses and it's too short or whatever, then I can just always put a plate in or something to connect the two, but it would be nice to tie that support into the cage. Every time you do this sort of front triangulation setup on a cage, sometimes it's really simple and straightforward to do, sometimes it's a real pain in the ass. I'm making it difficult for myself here because I want to get those front legs as far forward as possible. If I position these a little bit further back, I wouldn't have to slide the cage backwards to uh, weld these all the way around. But because this is such a small car, I want to maximise the room I've got, especially with like tiny little doors. You know, you've got to think about if you need to get out of the car quickly, stuff like that. To me, it's worth the extra bit of work. So once you've got it cut like that, that'll fit the tube, but you, have, you need to bevel all these edges off properly. Otherwise, you risk just welding the outer corners. If you imagine if you ran a weld straight around that edge there, look how thin it is. You could potentially just be welding like a fraction of this tube. So you bevel it all and then you're guaranteed that when you weld it, you're going to be getting good, uh, good surface area for the weld. I like these for just cleaning out the ends of the tube too, because it doesn't dig into the metal at all. So that's beveled, so now if you weld, and when you weld, you, you know you're going to be welding the full thickness of the tube. The more of an angle this tube is notched at, the worse this gets, and the more important it is really to um, bevel it back. So we're going to go from the bottom of that tube up through the hole and just out to meet, hopefully get that at somewhere near a 45 degree angle. I think if we go for about 500, we're going to get good angle and hopefully just clear that support piece there. These are real handy if you're going to get into doing this for uh, just holding bits of pipe. So what I'm trying to do now is eyeball this across to uh, where it's going to fit. Right, so this is uh, sat pretty much exactly where I want it. It's, um, I'll tack the insides I'll weld as much of this as I can get to and then I'll just slide this back a little bit and just take this piece out and uh, weld the other side and then just slide it back in. So this is how we're looking in here. 
So I've just done exactly the same on that side as we got on that side. So I got these out, I can fully weld these all the way around. Once these are welded, I've marked where these come through the bulkhead. And what I'm gonna do is just put a flat piece of uh, 1.5 mil, just a little triangle like that, across this. And then when I slot it in, that will sit flat against where the bulkhead is. And I'll be able to just get some welds around it and then it will seal off the hole rather than trying to make plates that will sit in afterwards. If I just plate these across now, it's going to make life a lot easier um, when I come to seal the bulkhead up. So these are uh, sorted, might have to open out the holes a little bit where these are going to slide through because they're probably be a bit tight now. Um, but other than that, pretty much ready to go back in. I've just leveled this up. I've got to uh, get in the back here and uh, weld them around the back before I pull this forward. And then uh, we can push this as far forward as it'll go and get it all welded in.
she's welded in solid so um, I'll probably just stick a few couple of stitches around here and then just seal that round with seam sealer um, it's not really a lot of point in trying to weld it all the way around I need to patch up this hole that's where the original wiper motor sat but it's not going to go back in there I actually need to drill a couple more holes for the loom alright that is it for today the uh, main structure of the cage is now fully welded, not going anywhere. Next I can crack on with the uh, back section of the cage, get all that in. And I wouldn't normally have fully welded the bottom of the hoop um, until the door bars were finished in case I need to pull the hoop inwards to get to the welds on the back edges of the door bars. But because on this I've got so much space here where there's no um, panel or anything, you know, I can get the torch in behind the back really easily, so I've fully welded it all in, it's completely solid, job done. So first impressions of this thing, oh, I like it, it's got a nice smooth arc, it just does what it's, what it's supposed to do, it's, uh, it's got everything on it that it needs and nothing on it that it doesn't need. I mean, it's not digital touch screen and all that stuff, but um, do you really need all that stuff when you're just doing projects like this? No. So I'll get a load of hours in on it and um, then I'll be able to give you like a honest opinion on it. Um, but so far, so good. I'll stick a link in the description to their site so you can go and check this out so i'll probably be be doing like a, uh, an official sort of review type video on this where i will go through everything and show you exactly what it can and can't do and all that sort of stuff so next video is going to be me doing the back section of the cage which i think i'll probably get all that done in one video so should make a good one so yeah, cheers for watching, see you on the next one.